Hey, Sebastian. How's it going? Congratulations on winning this month's 11 Second Club. Uh, my name is Nick Bruno. I'll be doing your critique today. Uh, so you know I am a supervising animator at Blue Sky Studios, which I've worked at for a little over nine years now, starting at Ice Age 2, working all the way through Ice Age 37, most recently finishing up on Rio 2, which you should go see in theaters that open this weekend, and I'm currently supervising uh, Peanuts right now, which we're very excited about. But enough about me. Let's get into your assignment. Um, I think we should play it first so everyone can see. There's something very important I forgot to tell you. What? Don't cross the streams. Why? It would be bad. I'm fuzzy on the whole good-bad thing. What do you mean, bad? Cool. All right, so first of all, the ending is killing me. What happens? Does it explode? Did he cut a wire that got it to stop in time? That's my biggest question, which I want it to be resolved because it's killing me. But overall, it's really good. It's all The characters feel alive. It's appealing. It's clear. So the things I'm going to talk about are just little things here and there that I think could improve it overall. Um, my first thing for you is who are these guys? For some reason, these look like regular looking dudes and the regular, you know, t-shirt and jeans, but playing with nuclear reactors or something. Um, you know, perhaps even just the, you know, their outfit, you know, if it was just like white lab coats, you'd believe that these guys are guys that are supposed to be playing with this um, instead of just guys that happen to stumble across it. But that's not a huge, huge deal. Um, so what I'd like to do is take you through shot by shot and give you some of the things that I think we can improve on. All right, so for the first shot, for me the biggest thing here was um, focus. So we see him and he's working and then the camera quickly pans up before we get a really good chance to see what he's working on. Um, I think it's important that we see that he's doing something here but overall, his pose, I feel like all the interest is bringing me right here because of your pose. Um, you know, you have this huge negative space that basically points like a huge triangle to this area, and this is where all the detail is. But I think it's important that the viewer sees that she's working on something. Um, so something as simple as bringing him over so even closing the legs a little bit, but getting this other hand in silhouette here, so whatever, like, you know, his screw is, you know, whatever he's doodling with, um, you can see a little more clear. And also, if you have a little bit of uh, motion on those coils, you'll start to see in this little negative space here that we've opened up for the viewer, He's working on something, okay? And we've reduced this negative space to nothing so that this one stands out to be the most important, okay? Even little things like the angle of this hand, right, can help point you back to that. All right, so something that simple would help a lot. And giving a little bit more time so that we can really get a chance to, to settle in and, and zero in on that, those coils moving. Okay. Another thing, looking at this hand here, it's a little stiff. You know, we see him doing a lot of um, torque in there, but through here, during this arm move, there's zero life on that hand, and I think that's important to get in. Okay. Cool. The next thing is the camera move up. Feels a little rushed. Okay, you know, when you're moving cameras, you want to give that the same sort of polish and spline that you'd give everything else. Now, something going from this shot to the next shot, um, you know, the first time I watched this, I was a little thrown by 
going from this to a, a whole different character. Um, so what I would do here is even something as simple as you know the the time starting and flashing on can really give you something some new information uh, to throw the cut. Okay. Now you're probably already thinking, well, is the new information this TNT? Yes, but I think you know later on we start the clock, and right now we have a blank clock here that I think you're sort of waiting for something to happen with. So if you got up there and saw TNT, you let, you let the audience register that and all of a sudden the time starts. That would be a perfect opportunity to cut and see this guy do a little bit of a take, right? Either way, I believe this guy you want to start off, you know, about after, you know, six frames in with a blank. All right now he feels a little indifferent about it, but I think you want him to to really react. You know, show show a little bit more panic. Okay. Even the pose. Um, let's see. Let's see the better color here. Even the pose can be a little bit more forward, and you could already start to suggest. You know, his body turning slightly away from it. Okay. So that way we get a little bit more interest because of the the torque throughout the body. So the face is a little more angled up towards the object. The same look, you know, you extend the neck, but you get some more twists and tilts. Right, and you could already start to feel his body shading away. He seems nervous. His body language is already pulling away from it, which is the next thing I want to talk to you about. Um, There's something very important. If you watch, he's like, and then he pulls away, and then he starts going back. Now, I get that you're starting to move back to hide behind something, but there's a couple things here that something is kind of on screen, I think you want it to be a little bit more noticeable so it grabs a little bit more attention. Okay, and it doesn't need to be much. But more importantly, if his attitude is, oh, no, uh, I got to, you know, this is going to be bad. I don't think he's necessarily going to pull his attention away casually and then start to go back. Right? It feels like it's just, oh, did I leave my keys over there? You know, it feels um, just calm. I think you'd already start to be, you know, you'd react to it and start to pull away. Maybe a quick check to make sure you're going in the right direction. But you don't want to take your eyes off the danger there. Okay? All right. So I think you can overlap those beats a little bit more by starting to have him move back quick check, and continue back. I also think you want to end this shot with him already with his hand on the thing and the other hand, you know, reaching out. So you could already feel what he's starting to do. He's going to get behind the thing. It's like, hey, you know, watch out. Okay. Again, you know, I think you can get a little bit more Line of action change. I feel like the the chest can now really be aiming towards you know screen right instead of still keeping it frontal, which will give you even more torsion there. So at the beginning of the shot, you feel he's starting to pull away, and then by the end of the shot, you feel like he's really committing, but his eyes are still keeping focus on what he's afraid of there. Okay. And what would be good about that is beginning the shot, you just start with this line of action, but the body is sort of aiming a little bit away. And by the end, right, you're really pulling away. So you get a nice 
simple screen left to right movement, but you get a good strong line of action change throughout the shot so the character doesn't feel stiff. Whereas through here, it's not bad, but here he feels just a little static. At the end, he's starting to get a line of action change, but I think we can make that stronger. Okay. All right. Next, I just want to look at the hands again. There's something very important I forgot to tell you. Other than when he does the something very important that I have to tell you, the hands feel pretty locked. I think, you know, would you, when you're looking at it, would you coil up a little bit? Like, oh, God, like you start to pull away. There's subtle things you can do on the hands that I think could really help push what the character's thinking and feeling. Okay. Right here, they feel relaxed and just hanging down. But, you know, do you, or no, um, do you know, do you feel that change of them pulling back and then starting to reach out to try to find what he wants to grab onto over there? Okay. All right. We can move on. So this next shot. Tell you. What? Don't. Okay. So this guy, we'll call him, we'll call them Blondie and Baldy, okay? So Blondie. Important, I forgot to tell you. What? All right. He said there's something important I forgot to tell you. Now, that guy's reaction is what? Now, there's no blink. And I really think that the blink is a great and simple way of just showing that there's a thought there. So when he says there's something that important I want to tell you, what? All right? Even just a simple blink, even if it's a half blink. You know, I, I feel the thought. Important, I forgot to tell you. A little eye shift. What? But I think it makes it, it'll make it less like he saw something in the corner of his eye. Right? This could possibly be misconstrued as, you know, all of a sudden he saw light flashing. So where it's more reactionary, but you really would just sell the thought something as simple as blink and then open here and then blink again to turn back. And I would blink before you start to move the head. So blink, turn back. And you might, because you're blinking so close to the cut, you might extend a couple of frames just before changing to the next shot there. Um, I think that is the most important thing. Um, again, you know, he's working in here. I think some little things, you know, pushing again your line of action getting more of a curved gesture through here that's supported through the arm. All right, it's just another way to help bring your focus to what he's doing. Even the head, the head angle, again, using the eyes, nose triangle, All right, even that can help point you to what he's looking at. All right, all these little details can just really support that view, okay? The next thing is looking at the hands. Now, when you're, you know, when you're um, doing something with a screwdriver, you know, you'll definitely see squeezing and tension in those fingers to lead the push, the torque. But right now when I see your animation, I see too much negative space in the fingers there. All right? And they're definitely not alive as he's, he's torquing. What? Don't. And torquing, not twerking. Don't confuse that with twerking. Oh, yeah. Okay, so it feels like the hand is just lightly moving things around. So it doesn't really feel like he's really working. 
Okay. Again, even just something subtle in terms of the life of the scene, you know, perhaps giving these coils a little bit of um, life is would be a good thing. Tell you what? Don't. Okay. Other little things to look at when he says what? You know, using that blink going into the turn is a good opportunity to get into more of a squash face. And I don't mean you have to go like, you know, really scrunch it up. But for the what, you can get some good opposing action in there. So if Let's say he, his eyes are closed here. And the brows just came down just a little bit. And the ooh face came up just a little bit. And you gave a little bit of widening to those nostrils. And a little bit of life to those cheeks. You know, you can go from this to the what. Which would make these just a bit wider. Which could bring the brows up a little bit more. Which would thin the nose because the mouth is open just a little bit more, right? I'm trying to think of a good way to, to jump back and forth. So you can really feel the what, 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 right? So you get good opposing action, what, okay? Little details like that, you don't have to overdo it at all. But little details like that just break up the face from feeling very CG and just get it feeling a little bit more organic. What? And you can apply that anywhere. So even the, the t on what, you can go squash for ooh, wah, t, and relax down. Okay? So you're always playing with the sprinkling in a very tiny amount of squash and stretch. Don't cross the streams. Okay. So here, this next shot, I felt that it would benefit from seeing him get behind just a little bit more. Now his attitude is, you know, we're further into this. The progression is, you know, we saw him starting to back up. Now I think we want to see him protecting himself. But when we come into this shot, don't cross the streams. He feels the same as before, right? He's just behind something now. But now I think you want to be like, don't cross the stream. Okay, so the overall idea of this shot is, you know, he's more hiding. I think it's fine that he points from behind that thing, but I think you want to see him, you know, really committing to getting to safety, okay? I also think it's important for his eyes to be a little bit more focused and a little bit more worried on what he's looking at. So it's just like the beginning of the shot is he's looking up at the thing, a quick look down, and then a quick look back up. So it's like, don't cross the streams. All right? So you can see, again, he's terrified at that thing up there that's going to go off. But he wants to make sure he connects with you real quick. Okay. Um, even the pointer finger. You know, make sure that it's pointed up. Even the support of the, the lower arm there, the forearm, can help aim up. Okay. So overall, overall action is starting to hide behind the thing, but you feel like he's finishing that move, he's settling in, he's like, don't cross the stream. Okay, and you might even have a little bit of tremble, something to show that, um, you know, his adrenaline's racing a little bit more than it was before. Why? It would be bad. I'm... Okay. The next shot... You know, you really don't like blinking. It's okay for the, the terrified guy to not blink. He's terrified, he's focused, 
He's not pulling his eyes off there. This guy would be like, why? Okay, particularly on this big head change, you know, I could feel like his eyes just getting overloaded with information. So I think this would be a good place to blink open. Why? It would be games. Why? Okay. So, in terms of focus, here's a quick tip. Um, right now, when you move into this next series of moves here, why? The thing we see finishing all these moves is what? His arm. So his head starts to move, then his arm comes down and finishes it. So what does that do? Really, we want to be looking here. And we kind of are, but our eye is being tickled by this. Okay? And again, you know, this starts to drop, so we're sort of looking here again. But then here, we come up and we catch the eye. So here, you're doing a good thing. And that is, you typically try to finish the move with the thing you want to be focused on. So for example, um, let's say I were to bring in two hands at the same time. Okay. You, by doing it that way, you're sort of giving the viewer a choice. They're going to naturally pick one hand over the other, or they're going to land somewhere in between sort of looking at both. But if I continue the motion of one hand a little bit more than the other, it's definitely going to grab your focus, right? Okay? All right? I'm doing it in like silly little ways. But you can definitely feel the hand that keeps moving is getting my attention. So, um, if I was doing this move and I want you to look at my eyes, you know, I'm going to, I might start with the hands, I might even start with the head, finish the hands up, and then continue with the head and the eyes widening. So that my attention whoop, zones in to that focus area. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind throughout. And it's just a little thing that you can do to help polish things up and really get your focus landing where you want it. It would be bad. Okay, so here... Dreams. Why? It would be bad. Why? You know, he thinks about it for a second, and then he forgets about it and commits to his work. So again, why? Ah, forget it. You know, blink, turn into the work. Okay? You may even be able to break up some of the very pose-to-pose -pose stuff by adding in a little bit of texture here and there. Why? It would be bad. Okay. Because everything feels the same. So he goes, huh, huh, huh. Right? Everything starts with the same feeling and ends with the same feeling. The overall timing between them is the same. But you may be able to move through one and then just be sharp about getting back to work. So the first thing may be like, huh, what were you talking about? Where the body may overall progress through that, but the thought process or the face and the head may have different um, poses and timing. But then, overall, when he gets back to his work, everything moves back to that. Okay? So you can feel him move through this pose a little bit more to that one. So then the next big change, you know, is going back to that. So, huh? Okay. All right. I'm fuzzy on the whole good-bad thing. What do you mean, bad? The streams. Why? It would be bad. Okay. And again, instead of just feeling very A to B, committing back, you may be like, why? There may be a little bit of, you know, how does he feel about that? Like, well, is he shrugging it off? A little bit of texture, a little bit of um, nuance, I think, would really help. Again, break up the A to B factor of it and give it a little bit of spice. I'm fuzzy on the whole good-bad. Why? It would be bad. 
I'm fuzzy on the whole. Okay. When he says I'm fuzzy, he's getting, it's like, all right, enough, right? But right now, there's nothing that really helps lead you into this. He all of a sudden just moves, and it feels like an abrupt move if you're watching the eyes. I'm fuzzy. Okay. I think you want to blink. Ugh, I'm fuzzy on the whole. Okay. Even a little anticipation. A little down before the up. It really help get your attention to those eyes. And then those eyes rolling could lead you into that move away. Okay? Yeah, and the whole good-bad thing. Okay. Even when he says the whole good-bad thing. Again, there could be a little bit of texture, a little nuance. It would be bad. I'm fuzzy on the whole good-bad thing. I'm fuzzy on the whole good-bad thing. All right, break up the body. Loosen it up a little bit there. He's feeling casual. The other guy's feeling tense. So where one guy is a little tighter and nervous, this guy's a little more loose and ah, whatever. You know, you can break up the body a little bit more there. What do you mean bad? Okay. And what that'll do is overall, if you loosen him up, when the thing starts yeah, to go off... Good, bad thing. What do you mean bad? Then you can really feel the tension in his body change, right? So if I'm loose, it's like, okay, whatever. What do you mean a good bed? Okay, it's loose, a little broken up, and then when I realize everything happens, you feel everything clench and tighten and move together again. Okay, and there you'll feel him reacting in a negative way to what's about to happen. Okay. Okay. Other things, again, in terms of opposing action, you got here. Okay, when he looks up, I just feel the body raise, but that would be a good time to feel like if these shoulders dropped just a bit more, you'd feel this. Okay, you'd feel a little bit more Tension, to like uh, a little more squash, to a little bit more stretch, okay? So break that up a little bit more. So even in terms of tension and lack of tension, right? Here, when he's a little more casual, you know, like we were suggesting before, you know, you feel the angles in this arm, because that's where tension is. He's putting some muscle into it. But everything else, feels curved and soft, okay? And you feel those shoulders rolled forward. But then when you go into the, you know, that look up pose, you know, you could feel the body language tense up and get a little straighter there. You can feel his abdomen tightening up, okay? But you can feel that, that squash and stretch, squash, stretch, okay? But all those little elements I would look for throughout your shot to pepper them in. You mean bad. Cool. And again, lastly, what happens? What happens here? Cool, man.